Well, welcome to the Business Spotlight Series. My name is Tanner O'Brien. I'm a senior partner here at Action Coach in Central Texas. And today I'm sitting down with Darcy Utrecht, who's the owner of Spirit Trucking LLC. Uh, so excited to be sitting down, having a conversation with you. Darcy, thank you so much for taking the time to be here. Excited to uncover a bit of your journey into business ownership, entrepreneurship, the different things that you've experienced along the way. Uh, and just kind of have a bit of a, a fun conversation here. So first off, thank you so much for taking the time. Um, if we could, I'd love to just start with a little bit of background. Uh, share, you know, maybe the 10,000 foot view of who you are and what your background is and tell us a little bit about Spirit Trucking LLC. All right. Um, uh, thank you for having me. I'm glad to be here. And uh, my path getting here was kind of unique. I, I went straight out of high school into college, um, was graduating without any idea what I wanted to do. I was encouraged to continue on to uh, to get an advanced degree. And as a college student who didn't know what they wanted to do, to have the opportunity to actually go and be paid um, to commit to, to helping to teach and helping to research, I was all in. And when I graduated with my master's degree, I still didn't know what I wanted to do. So I took a break, a responsible break, and learned to drive tractor trailers. So I drove over the road for about seven years and pushed the ceiling on that as much as I could, learned about as many different kinds of jobs uh, in, in the field of driving um, the world of commerce, what, what that was like. I mean, having been in school my whole life, seeing a whole lot more about how we interact with each other and how the business world works. It naturally progressed into me starting and owning a business. That is fantastic. And for Spirit Trucking LLC, uh, give us a little bit of a context on what that business looks like for someone that has no idea and just kind of needs the the overview of it. Give us kind of the, the, the quick version of, of what you all do and, and how you kind of make connections, things like that within the business. Yeah. So we're in central Texas. Um, we're kind of like your, your local FedEx and uh, the coffee shop that you love so much kind of squished together. It's a very personal approach. Um, we're working with uh, anything that can fit in a box. It needs to go from place to place. We're connected with a lot of manufacturing, uh, distributors, suppliers, and you know, ultimately um, we can help anybody who needs to get something from point A to B. Um, we want to be a good fit. We want to serve the community and connect, excuse me, connect businesses so that there's um, a flow in in the world of commerce around us Very help cool. the community yeah i love that um that is uh, that is such a, a wonderful way to kind of express it and and i think is is really easy for for the audience to to be able to kind of understand some of those pieces there so i appreciate that um i do always like to just you know take a moment kind of set the stage for for the listeners for the viewers you know, I, we were talking very briefly on uh, before we jumped on the the official uh, interview here, and we've got the ability to, or I've had the opportunity to chat with so many different types of businesses, from mm -hmm. you know startups to businesses that have been around for now 20, 30, 40 years, to everything in between, to sole founders, to business partners, to those that are part of bigger event investment groups, all that kind of stuff. And it kind of sets the frame for um, how we go through some of the conversation and, and what, it, right. what it looks like for you. So I like to just start with asking the question, uh, what is that ownership structure very broadly stated uh, look like for you? Are you the sole founder? Do you have business partners? Have you ever had to take on outside investment or chose to make that that decision as you continue to grow? What does that look like for you? Super simple. It's a single member LLC and uh, no partners, no investors. Um, I mean, that's it, it's it's pretty straightforward. I mean, I've, I know that there's a whole lot to establishing an LLC and a lot of different ways it can go. Um, but yeah, we're just a sole proprietorship doing what we do. Beautiful. Uh, kind of my, my next thing I love to ask is, you know, in business, we tend to, at least at one point or another in the business, wear a few different hats within the business, uh, play a few <laughs> different roles. Um, so <laughs> given where you're at in the business today, what what hats do you have to wear? What roles do you currently play in the business? Uh, well, uh, so we, we've been around the block for a little bit 
over 20 years and there've been a lot of hats. Um, I, I don't know that there's a current hat that I get, I don't know that there's one I get to keep up with and wear. I think the most valuable hat I've worn is the driver hat, actually. Mm -hmm. I think that piece um, keeps me in touch with uh, what goes on in the job, what's important to the driver. I mean, they're the front lines. So the the work that's being done, connecting with that, understanding it, being able to support it, um, find good jobs for the drivers, um, match drivers with customers, uh, everybody's happy. Um, and every other hat, I mean, they're still there. They get rotated on a regular basis. Um, it, you've, as an owner, you have to manage everything moving forward in parallel. So I don't think you ever, in any high level in a business, get to take any of those hats off. I think you need some uh, oversight on a little bit of everything that's going on. And the better you understand it, you know, I think the better, the more successful the company can be. Excellent. Um, so let, let's talk about the business. Let's talk about kind of what makes it so special. Um, I like to, you know, start off with the simple question. I think you've kind of already started to allude to this a little bit, but, uh, you know, who does the business primarily serve? And the way I like to frame this up is if I'm in the audience and I'm listening to this, I'm watching to this back later on, how, how do I know that I'd be a really good fit to come, you know, work with y'all? uh to either that or i might know somebody or know a business that would be a really good fit to to work with y'all like who do you primarily tend to work with the most our uh foundational connections are in in manufacturing and distribution or supply houses um you know we're shipping building materials wood stone tile um brick mortar all those good things for projects that can be as small as somebody renovating a house or building a house to building a business uh supplying a business um and anything that um sorry that i'm on do not disturb but that's the one person that gets to call me during the day that just rang through um <laughs> At, at any rate, so we're serving the community um, on that level, but there's also, there's there's materials and goods that need to be moved around, furniture, mm -hmm. um, appliances. So we're, we're trying to um, just find the place where we're a good fit, find the place where people need service, maybe special handling that they're not getting somewhere else, uh, things along that line. And and match up to give them service that they need at, at a reasonable rate and uh fantastic uh, you know everybody's happy when we're done that's excellent i love to hear that um so why why do your 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 customers your clients choose to work with you as as opposed to competitors that might be in the area like what what separates the experience that you provide versus um what maybe some others out there may not be providing yeah, there's a lot. Um, there's a lot of transportation companies, right? And um, there's plenty of business for everybody. I don't, I don't know that there's any competition. I think a lot of uh, the opportunity that we have is to be personalized with our service. We engage with our customers one on one. So a lot of it's about good fit. I mean, sometimes somebody just doesn't have a personality that's going to match with your your ideas of doing business and. So we're, like I said, we're just trying to connect with the people that need assistance. It's a good fit model. It's a win-win model and just San Antonio to Austin every day <laughs> and surrounding areas. Oh, amazing. Amazing. <laughs> I, I, I love that. I love the, the personal experience, personal, the, just it being a good fit. Um, but this leads me kind of into the topic of marketing. I always like to ask a few questions around marketing in general. It's an area that right. for most businesses uh, may be uh, kind of an area that can be challenging for some, especially if there isn't a back isn't a background in marketing. Uh, but it's an area that's also vital to every business. You know, you got to have some level of of inflow of of leads, that sort of thing. So you know, I like to ask just you know out of curiosity. Um, what, what is your philosophy been to marketing? How do you, how do you get in front of, of those that you want to be doing business with? As a baseline, I think it's really critical to establish your brand and your culture because every 
interaction that you have going through the day is potentially a marketing interaction. You're interacting um, and people need to know who you are and, and what you're about. So knowing what that is, and then of course, uh, reaching out to um, establish that connection. Uh, digital presence is huge. I mean, it's that's accessible to everybody. Um, and you know, our, our website is probably our, our key uh, funnel. And it's it's kind of a, a quick business card that's out there that anybody can find if they're looking for a trucking company. Um, and as far as, you know, over the course of 20 years, we've tried a lot of different things. You can spend a whole lot of money on marketing. It's crazy. And not a whole lot of... I don't know any company that has come in with the million dollar marketing budget can just do anything that they want. So, you know, operations get established and the, th the things that are actually driving revenue are the things that, that, that get the money, that get the attention. But you've got to have that flow. You've got to have that marketing uh, funnel to bring back in to keep that uh, progression going. So um, it takes some creativity. And I think when you dig into the creative levels of thinking through who you are and, and what you want to say, some really neat things happen. I mean, some of my favorite ads, it, some of the things that I see, Super Bowl commercials, it's because they're creative and you don't need to run a Super Bowl commercial to, to get that message out. And ultimately mm. for me, I think the, the most important connection really just give me a business card or a piece of paper, something that's exchangeable, has a little bit of information and let's talk one-on-one -on -one and figure out how we can help each other. Are we a good fit? Are we able to, to do something that's going to be profitable and engage us both in a healthy way and, and move business forward? I love that. The, the There's a lot to be said about the that human-to-human -human connection. Um, I think sometimes that can get lost in today's day and age with you know this big push to digital and it's like, that's great. People can find you that way, but uh, people tend to do business with people that they can actually connect with, at least at some point in the process. Um, marketing is one of those things that, I, yeah, I I love to talk about. It's, it, yeah, there's not many that come in with a really large budget. And if uh, it's the area right. of like, I, I know that half my marketing is working. I just don't know which one, uh, you know, which half of it. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it, you know, it's, it's kind of crazy yeah. sometimes. Um, so let, let's take a step back. I want to talk a little bit more about okay. kind of your journey into uh, into starting the business. So uh, went through school, got your master's degree, went and spent, uh, would you say, seven years or so um, on the road learning, uh, yeah. really learning, you know, parts of, of this industry, of this business. Um, what was the that kind of pivotal mo moment for you or what was the catalyst to make the decision to you know, start your own business rather than continuing on or choosing to work for somebody else? What a great question. Um, so when you own a truck or a car, I mean, anybody that's, uh, I think in today's world is termed an independent contractor or, or an owner operator. Um, all of a sudden you're running a business and um, the the fact that the the parts of the job I pushed through as many glass ceilings as I could, I tested as much of the 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 market as I could, and of course, you know, on the other side of this, I didn't realize how uh, uninformed I was. I mean, getting into business is 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 quite a leap. I said it was a natural progression, and um, once I made that decision, it was inevitable that it needed to keep being made. I mean, I saw things in my experience as just, you know, driving for people where I didn't, I didn't like it. I didn't appreciate it. I didn't feel appreciated, whatever things, things didn't match up. So ultimately keep moving in the direction of, you know, how do you make things right? Well, you think you can do it on your own. We've done okay. We've made a lot of mistakes, but it, it was, there was a little bit of ego there. And there was a little bit of fatigue uh, as far as, you know, what it was like to have a job and, and be in, in that space. Um, I love what I do. I, I feel very, very fortunate to, to have the opportunities that I've had and to live the life that I live. So um, I hope that's an, uh, an answer that's helpful. Um, there's, there's, no, there's no reason to go one way or another, get into business, not get into business. Don't try to be something you're not, be authentic. 
but ultimately, you know, I, I think those of us that are that are in the the entrepreneurial space, it's natural. It's a natural progression from where we've been to to what we want to do, and and how we want to chart our course in life, and and to I think generally to try to help others. So, mm. yeah, I love that, and you know, making that 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 change and continue to to grow and build. Um, I imagine there's been some lessons learned along the way. Um, yeah, especially you know starting into a first business and continuing to grow and scale and everything else that, that comes along with it. Yeah. Um, when you reflect back on, you know, the journey so far, has there been, you know, or can you, re, you know, recall, let's say one or two important moments where there was maybe a challenge or a roadblock that you had to overcome uh, that really helped define the type of business that you were creating or, or the type of business person that you've become today? Of course, um, tr trying to pick out um, over the course of a couple decades. Um, you know, I talked about going from education into to, to driving. I don't know that I'm ever not a student every day. And I've been taught so many lessons. Um, you can't do it all really is, is the biggest one. I think overcoming the hurdle of I'm a driver holding on to the steering wheel and yeah, I'm running a business, um, but I could do it better if I was listening to people more. And well, if I listen to people more, maybe I can work with somebody. Um, I, I think uh, overcoming the fear of getting bigger is sometimes uh, an issue for some people. Managing cash flow. Um, has has certainly I think it, I think it's a challenge with any business pretty much every day it's it's got to be at least top of mind um, compliance um, I said you know you can't do everything compliance is probably depending on who you are a part of business that's going to catch you at some point or another we don't necessarily come in we as any business owner, knowing all the legal ramifications. I mean, consult mm -hmm. with lawyers, you do, do these things because you will get caught if you're not um, managing things the way that, that government agencies and state agencies, whatever, expect you to do. So um, again, happy to be here today. <laughs> And there's, there's so many lessons in that. Um, you know, I, I always like to just, you know, pull a little bit on the thread of, you know, being able to learn the process of managing cash flow. Um, it's like, you can learn a bit, but until you really get in and experience it, I think that's where at least most of us in business or entrepreneurs really learn, you know, what that process actually looks like and feels like, yeah. um, and, and having, you know, the ability to connect and, and surround yourself with, um, with the right types of people. And, and I mean that in the sense of like, let make sure you have an attorney that you can reach out to make sure you've got a CPA that knows the, right. the tax code and things like that oh, as, yes. as you continue to, to grow. And, um, you know, it, it's fantastic to hear, uh, you know, someone that's been in business as long as you have, you know, reiterate some of those, those core fundamentals that it's just really important in business. Um, so when you look to, you know, the next three to five years, you know, what does that look like for for the business as you continue to grow? What does that look like for you within the business? Um, I simply I, I don't know that my role will change a whole lot. Um, uh, definitely in a, a position where it's easier to manage time at this point. Um, our team does a great job. We work together and things are efficient. Um, in terms of the future, of course, every business hopes to grow. We're looking at providing more opportunity for, for drivers. Um, and pretty much if, if you're helping drivers succeed, you're, you, the work is there. You're connecting with the customers. You're connected in the community. That's just naturally going to push things forward. So we're, we're in a position um, to do that. And then I recently had a conversation with somebody. We're, we're set up kind of in a position where we're copy and paste ready. So we've got this company, we've got this system. Um, we understand after a little bit of time, 
uh, that this module works. Now you can pick this up and you can take it to another city. Let's let's do it again. You know, is there somebody out there that has that interest that wants to uh, um, have the support? It's not franchising, but um, it, it's similar. Like it's it's copy and paste ready. So, you know, we're hoping to see ourselves start to uh, show up in some other cities. We've had invitations. We haven't been ready. Um, other states have been asking. We'll see how it all goes. Stay tuned. Oh, that's so cool. Um, I'm yeah. excited. To, I'm, I'm excited to stay tuned and, and, and hear it. It's, it always excites me when I hear businesses that are ready for kind of that next phase that the duplication phase, you know, whether that is, you know, just replicating one more office in central hub or whatever, or franchise right. or, or whatever that, that methodology is, it's, it's cool to see businesses yeah. get to that level. Um, cause unfortunately I, I don't know that the percentage, but it's a pretty small percentage of businesses that make it long enough to get to that point. Um, so congratulations on, you know, being on the cusp of that. That, that is really, really cool to see. Uh, but Darcy, I want to be respectful of our time. I know we've been chatting for a while here today. Uh, so I've got kind of some, some rapid fire questions I like to go through as we kind of begin to wrap up our conversation today. I've got four of them here. I know we probably could go fairly deep on a couple of them, but uh, generally top ahead answer best we can for each one of these. Okay. Here. Uh, so first question I've got for you is what would you say is your key to success? Uh, lead change. Don't let change lead you. Ooh, I like that. Lead change. Don't let change lead you. I'm going to write that one down. Oh, sweet. I like it. Beautiful. It's what we're uh, here for. Yeah, exactly. Um, what is one piece of advice that you would give to other business owners? Um, it's, it's related to goal setting. We all have goals. We all have things we want to do. Basically, if you've got a target, uh, stay focused on it you're never going to hit it if you're not staying focused on the targets you can't do everything um you know if if you parse the pieces that it takes to get to a goal and just focus on two or three you don't substitute for a new piece until you've you've handled one of those completely then you've got a way to to push forward and keep targeting those goals hmm. i love stay it stay focused love it love it what is uh what's one book that either you've read most recently or you might be currently reading I'm a fan of audiobooks and I tend to listen to something along the the, the self-help, business improvement, um, learning. I'm, I'm constantly learning. So and the most recent is Seth Godin, Poke the Box. Ooh. Super fun read. Yeah. What was, the what was the name of it again? S Seth Godin, Poke the Box. Poke the Box. I don't know if I've read that one. I will have to put it on my list. I, I read a few of other other books by Seth and that they're all fantastic. Um, so yeah, I'll definitely have to put guy. that one on. Um, yeah. I kind of final rapid fire question. I, I love this one because it's just kind of fun. Um, as you look at your, as your business, if you were able to, to, you know, pick up a basket of magic dust and put it on just one specific area in your business and it would magically improve it overnight and you could wake up tomorrow and it was, I don't know, 10, hundred times better than it was today. Where would you choose to put that magic dust? Uh, more driver opportunities. It's it's the same thing we talked about before. If if we've got better jobs for drivers, uh, we've got a system that's feeding back in, looping back into happy customers and growth. Fantastic. Yeah. Excellent. So before we get to the final question that I always love to, to wrap out these conversations on, um, for those that are watching that want to learn a little bit more about your journey, that want to connect with you, that want to just learn more about, you know, Spirit Trucking LLC and, you know, where, where can we advise them to go for more information and, and to follow the amazing things that you can, that y'all are continuing to do? Yeah, please visit us on our website, uh, spirittruckingllc.com. Um, that's there's a, a couple of ways to interact with us there. If you're a driver, um, there's a button to push to send us some information. If you're looking for answers of any other sort, there's a form that'll come into me via email, so we can check it out and get connected. And I'm happy to have a conversation with anybody about. Uh, how can we create a win-win situation and move the world forward? Amazing. So Darcy, as we wrap up here, I always love to end on this one specific question. 
and that is this what is most inspiring to you today um we all have a story that's um sometimes created from where we came from or um what we've experienced and i think that the thing that inspires me the most is to see people rewriting their stories taking charge and making change and you know stepping out of um maybe something where they were set up to be you know less than they could be i guess is, is a way to say it but i really like to see when when people collaborate and they innovate and um so change your story i get i love it amazing Darcy, thank you so much for taking the time to be here. This has been <laughs> absolutely phenomenal. I'm, I'm always certain you know, when I have these types of conversations that I could sit down and probably chat for you know an hour or two and just really you know dive in and just have some you know fun uncoverings of things that you've gone through. Um, but you know, in the time that we had here today, I'm just I'm really appreciative and and have to say thank you for for taking the time and sharing what you have with us today. I'm so glad I was here. You've been super. I really appreciate the opportunity. Of course.